first task we're going to need some sort of controller i've got an arduino here but you could use an sp32 or anything like that we've got the sd card reader we've got the sd card and of course we need some sort of temperature sensor this is the dallas semiconductor 18b20 absolutely ubiquitous this is also a temperature probe and in fact this is also a ds18b20 basically inside this sort of metal tube cylinder is just one of these and literally i've took one of these apart is literally these wires are just in there soldered onto one of these and it's in the casing like that these are sold to be waterproof so you can actually measure the temperature of hot liquids. They go up to about 125 degrees Celsius, I think, is the spec for these, before they actually might actually leak in through the seal there. But as you see in this episode, I'm going to put this in hot water, and I'll show you how you can do that as well. One of the advantages of doing that, of putting this straight in hot water, is that this metal can, and with this being sort of like almost just loose inside, it takes a while before the temperature changes. It has to heat up the thermal, capacity of that metal has to transmit to the temperature sensor inside so cooling and heating is sort, sort of lags behind if you can get this package this plastic package into your fluid it will change and be more responsive to the temperature more quickly but as you all but as you can obviously see we have to insulate that from the liquid that you're putting it into and also we'll show you how to basically just create a data that is suitable for directly imported into excel let's get started so the first job is to solder up the sensor. So that's the ground, positive VCC, and the data line. So we're going to add copious amounts of hot glue to ensure that it's waterproofed, making sure we do leave at least some of the plastic exposed so it reacts better to the temperature of the environment. Then we solder up the ends of the wires with some DuPont connectors just to make it a lot easier to actually push them into the breadboard. If you're putting this onto strip board, you wouldn't need these. So with that done, see, all sealed up, wires on. Let's see how we actually make up the circuit. As you can see here, I've actually got the SD card already in place. That's because I've dealt with this in a previous episode. There'll be a link coming up on the top of the screen now if you want to look at how the SD card is wired and used with the Arduino. We're going to skip that part in this video. But to wire up the actual temperature sensor. You, obviously, VCC will go to my voltage rail, which is a 5 volt to the Arduino. My ground is going to go to the ground rail. And then the more eagle-eyed of you might have noticed, I've already got a resistor on here. It's a 4.7K resistor connected to the VCC and then to pin 2, to digital pin 2. The data line of these temperature sensors has to be pulled up to... VCC for it to actually be able to communicate with the Arduino and the recommended value is 4.7k so basically I'm going to connect the data line to pin digital pin 2 which is then being pulled up with that 4.7k resistor there that's the entire circuit all done let's have a quick look at it in action on the serial monitor so first things first let's look at what libraries we need to actually read this sensor so go to manage libraries and type in DS18B20 and the one you want is this one by Miles Burton et al. You can see I've already got it installed, you just click install and away you go. It needs another library to support it which is called the one wire library to so type in one wire. And if I just scroll down here, you can see this one. This is the one you want by Jim, not sure how to pronounce that name, <laughs> but by these people. Again, I've got that installed. You need to install that. And then when you go back to your environment, you should be able to go to examples, go down to the bottom here, Dallas Semiconductor, uh, Dallas Temperature, sorry. Go to simple, just expand that. And that's just going to print out the temperature to the serial bus. So we'll upload that to the Arduino and have a look at what it outputs. So let's bring up the serial monitor and my Arduino with the temperature sensor on. And there we go, it's going quite quickly at the screen, but 21.87, 21.94, around that area. So let's just put my fingers on the end, and we should see that rise up. So there it goes, 23, 24, 
25, etc. Everything's working fine, no need to labour that point. So let's have a look at the software to actually log the temperature to the SD card. So here's the code, you'll find this on my website, link coming up on the screen now. Ignoring the comments at the top, we can see that we need those two libraries there to deal with the actual temperature sensor. And these two, as it's learned in another video, are actually for communicating with the SD card. The one wire bus, the data connection for the sensor, we've connected to pin two, so that needs to be pin two there. And here is how often we're going to take temperature readings. So this is a temperature log, remember, we're going to take it every so period of time. It's set in minutes, as you can see there. So we're going to take a reading every one minute. And then we just have a couple of objects that we create to deal with the actual temperature sensor itself. Scrolling down to the setup, won't go into it in too much detail, but we've got things that check with the SD cards working and the line to actually just initialize the sensors, or sensor, it's just the one temperature sensor in this case. Making sure we've opened a serial port to report any problems. We don't actually use a serial port per se if everything's working fine. It's just in case we have a problem, it'll report it back via that. And then we, when we store in this log of data to the SD card, it will have a core file name, which if we just go up here, you'll see is called T-log, T for temperature and then an underscore just there. So T-log underscore something. What this software does, it makes sure that if you if your Arduino has a problem, it loses power, gets reset, whatever, that actually previous data is not overwritten. So what it does, it when it first boots up, it looks at your SD card for any temperature logs already there, and it won't overwrite them. So the file name will be the T log underscore as the core part of the file name and then use an index. So there's nothing on that SD card, it's completely blank. Then the index starts at a value of one, which is just set further above there that we just can't see off screen. But the index is set to one, so it will be called T log underscore one dot CSV. The CSV is important, it stands for comma separated values, and it means it should launch into Excel automatically, or Excel will also it or open it automatically without any ifs and buts and asking you anything about it and it'll look like you just stored it as a normal excel file but in a very easy to follow format each value separated by a comma and each row of values by a carriage return so if you've already got a previous file on say called tlog underscore one then as it's going around looking for that if it finds tlog underscore one then it will increase the index and not do anything when eventually it finds something it might be you've got four T logs on there, underscore one, two, three, and four. So it'll get to index five, it won't find T log underscore five, so it'll go past there and it will then cre create that as the actual file name. The file name will be T log underscore five if you've already got four previous logs on there. So you don't lose any data. We're going to leave the erasing of data up to the operator. And again, that allows for resets or battery power offs. You wouldn't necessarily want to lose, say, five hours worth of logging data just because the cat pulled the cable out or the battery out of power or whatever happened. Although for the cat, a quick trip to the vets for the long sleep would solve that for the future. It would then reboot, carry on logging on a new file from where it left off. So in the main loop, it's very short, as you can see, because all we're going to do is check for whether we need to do another reading. And if we do, it'll take one. And if you look, it takes an initial reading here, just at the end of setup. So it takes the initial ground, well, not ground zero, but the initial zero time reading. And then after that, it waits for the amount of time you've set between minutes between readings. And then it'll take one. So this one, it's gonna take one every single minute, every one minute. And then when it takes the readings, I'm not going go through this in too much detail for this, but you request some temperatures, you request the temperature, sorry. It creates a data string of what it needs. So it will actually, in that data string, it will come up saying the time. So the first initial one will be zero and it will record your temperature. And the next one will be one for one minute and the temperature two, and then the temperature three for three minutes and then temperature, etc., cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Forever until you switch off the data logger, unplug it or whatever. And that's it. So let's actually look at this happening in real life. I'm going to put the temperature probe into some boiling water and we're going to record the temperatures for 30 minutes and just see whether compared to a clock the Arduino does log 30 minutes of recording 30 recordings let's just see 
how accurate the Arduino is at keeping time. We'll also get some nice data over time to show you how we import that into Excel. Let's time lapse this part so you don't fall asleep. So it's been 30 minutes, let's unplug the Arduino, extract the SD card and look at the raw data. So let's pop that SD card into the SD card reader. Here we go. You can see that there are three logs, so the one we'll want will be the latest one that we've just done. And that's showing you what happens. There was obviously two logs on here from when I was testing early with the software. And then when we ran the software again for that time lapse, we created the third log, T log underscore two. If you look at the date modified, they all say year 2000 at midnight. That's because these are created on the Arduino, which has no real time clock. It's certainly not one we've got on that board and that setup. So they're always going to default to that particular date. So you won't be able to sort by date or anything, which is why it shows it essential that we can see which ones are created in order using that index reference that we've got there. So let's open one of these up. And you can see because of that .c SV extension, we can open that text file straight into Excel. Obviously, we can't put any formatting in it, so we're gonna to have to stretch things out so we can see what they say. So you see, with that simple .csv extension, we can open it straight into Excel without any problems whatsoever. So you can see we've logged at time zero, 25 degrees, and that's because obviously the probe hasn't had time to actually come up to temperature. And it's even worse if it's in that metal can like it's playing at the very start of the video. But then after one minute, we've come up to 85. So if you wanted, if you wanted to wait, wait, say, maybe 10 seconds before taking the initial reading, you could have pressed reset on your Arduino, and that would have then started a new file at that point, which probably would have been about 90 to 95 degrees or something like that, because the kettle was fairly freshly boiled, and within seconds was put into that jug. And let's see if we've got those 30 readings. So we scroll down. Yes, we have down to 30 exactly. So the Arduino has kept reasonable time. I happen to know that, you know, over a few hours or so, or maybe longer, the Arduino is going to drift compared to a normal clock. So it's worth bearing that in mind if you want to be really accurate and how often the readings are taking place. And in fact, in the next video I do in this sort of series, we will look at a solution to that where we can keep very accurate time if you really need that functionality. In fact, recording the actual time the reading was taken as well, rather than just the actual minute from a start. You can see all the temperatures are there. So let's see if we can create a nice graph from that. Look at our cooling curve. So we'll ignore the temperature from zero, which is a bit of anomalous because obviously I don't have time to sort of come up. So we'll select those 30 readings there. And we'll go to insert. And um, we'll do a, a scatter with some nice sort of interpolated curves. So let's put that on. There we go, make that a little bit bigger. And you can see we've got temperature against time, starting at 85 degrees there on that plot point and going down to the, whatever it was, like 48 there. You can see we've got a beautiful cooling curve. You can imagine if we actually recorded temperature for longer, we would level out or very slowly going towards room temperature. So that's it. Easy peasy way of data logging on your Arduino into a format that you can open straight into Excel and get a graph right away in seconds. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, then like, give that thumbs up. If you didn't, ah, ah like it anyway. What the heck? If you'd like to see more, then subscribe. Thanks very much to my patrons and thank you very much for watching if you'd like to support in any other sort of way you'll find some affiliate links down below for various items you've seen in the videos today so that's it for now see you in the next video cheerio